Hey everybody, and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. Before we get started, I'd like to go on with a quick introduction about what's going on with the channel. If you already know about this and want to skip it, you can just use the timestamps. Now, as many of you have noticed, I've been doing a lot of live streams lately, and I'm going to continue to do so. Every day, Monday through Friday, for one hour, I'm going to be reading live stories. And the reason why I want to do this is because I can get your feedback and engagement right away. You'll be able to comment and have debates with me and everybody else in the community on real time. And you'll be able to do so in three different platforms. YouTube, Twitch and Facebook. Whichever you like the most. And if you aren't able to join on the live stream, the live stream will remain up so you can watch it at any other time. And additionally, I'm going to take those stories, split them up and upload them later so you can also have them in shorter versions. So to finish up with this introduction, don't forget to follow my channel on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook and on Twitter. And of course, join our Discord community that keeps growing every day and where we have awesome debates and I update you guys on when the videos are coming out. And so after that really long introduction, let's get on with the story for today. This is a story almost two years in the making. This one's from user Inufan for Yasha. X reaching out after 10 years. I'm at a loss for what to answer with. Throw away account because this needs to stay secret for now. I, call me Anthony, 32 years old. Have been with my current girlfriend, call her Michelle, 33 years old, for four years. No plans of marriage and one time she cheated on me, drunk mistake, blah blah blah, whatever, I forgave her. We are pretty much best friends that do everything together and live together. Other than the one instance of cheating, we have had no major issues and live a pretty good life. She does not want marriage or kids. I do though. It's a hard no for her. Recently, my ex, call her Nicole, 32 years old, contacted me over a promise we made back when we broke up. When and if we're both not married by 32, we would find a way to be together. Some backstory on her and I. Childhood friends started dating in middle school, dated throughout high school. She was accepted to her dream college and so was I, on opposite ends of the country, Virginia Tech for her and Stanford for me. We did long term for two years until deciding to let each other live their life and be more connected to maybe someone closer if it was going to happen. This was a mutual decision and we broke up contact at that point so that we could move on. Her parents still talk to me on occasion, they live 4 hours away. Same with her sister, 20 minutes away, and her grandparents, 2 hours away. But never about her per my request. So flash forward. I have been getting calls from a weird number once every month since September. And just didn't answer because I don't answer numbers I don't know. Figure if important they would leave a message. X's sister comes by and says, Hey, this is from Nicole. She said you can read it and respond if you want, and if not, then she will understand soon enough. For the life of me, I had forgotten our weird promise, but the letter goes as this. Hey Anthony, I know neither of us have been in contact in the last 10 years, but I'm asking if you still remember the promise we made. I have no right to ask of it, and if you have moved on, then it's okay, as I want you to be happy. First and foremost, I want you to know this isn't a desperation to tempt because I am lonely. My sister was quite keen on giving that as the probable reason as to why I've been feeling this way and why I am bringing up that old promise. This is more along the lines of, I just can't imagine my life with anyone else. I, yes, have been on many dates and had one relationship that lasted over a year. But there was always this lack feeling in me that, well, in all honesty, they weren't you. You're the guy I knew instantly when we were young that I would want to be with forever. The guy who made me smile, that I could wake up next to and was genuinely happy knowing that we were together. In my mind, you, Anthony, have been my only want and desire. That day we decided to try and move on because of the distance. I won't lie, it took me about a year to realize how stupid that was. It was mutual, but my feelings are that I pushed you towards it. I honestly feel like the first suggestion of giving time to each other to finish school and not have to try and coordinate our lives was the stupidest mistake I could ever have done. Anthony, you are my soulmate, my love, my life, and that is why what comes next I say with all fear aside. I am ready to leave everything and find a new job, 
to move back to Candyland and be with you. I'm fully prepared to do this if you even think there can be a chance of us again. I love you. I love you and nobody else will ever take the place you have in my heart. I talked to my parents and friends. They are in full support of this. Also, thank you so much for being there for my parents when they needed help moving and working on dad's bike and truck. I had no idea until a few days ago. I will be fully committed to being yours. I want to be part of your life and want you to be in mine forever. Growing old, seeing the world change, the lives we live together as one, and most importantly, I just want us to be happy. I've wasted enough time holding back what I have wanted to say for the last few years. Anthony, I love you so much. I want to live my life with you. I'm prepared to leave it all for you. And lastly, my love, my childhood friend, my soulmate, I'm more than prepared to be your wife and be the mother to our children. If I don't hear back by the end of the month, I will assume you have moved on for the better and will do my best not to reach out again. If you decide otherwise, I have left my number and email. Love, childhood nickname, Nicole. To be honest, I don't know if I should respond or what I should do. She left her number, one that has been calling me, and her email. I'm conflicted a lot really. I literally cried when I read the letter and it brought back a lot of emotions that I didn't think were still there. Since Michelle, Nicole and I all went to the same high school, they both know each other and I'm honestly afraid Michelle will tell me to go be with her without a second thought if I told her about Nicole reaching out only just knowing how she is as a person. I've been debating it since getting the letter yesterday and since I always see good advice here, I thought to ask the Reddit family. Oh, difficult situation. I mean, regardless of the promise, one thing that we know is that he does have a history with Nicole, a really long history. He's also been dating Michelle for four years. The conflict I see here is that OP wants marriage and a family, and his current girlfriend Michelle doesn't want any of that. It is a hard no for her, as OP stated in the first paragraph. So what do you guys think OP should do? Should he disregard the letter? Should he tell his girlfriend and see how she reacts to it? What do you think OP really wants to do? Well, before we move on with OP's edit and then update, let's take a look at what the community suggested to OP. Middle Age Lothario says, You only have one life and your current relationship is not going anywhere, so take the shot. Heel Steamboat says, Holy crap balls! I feel like I'm watching a Lifetime movie except with a male protagonist. Bear in mind though, she may not be the same person she was 10 years ago. You guys may not be as compatible as before. I have no advice, but I want an update, please. Spazit Goes says, I don't think either relationship sounds great, to be honest. Current girlfriend wants totally opposite things than you. Ex-girlfriend trying desperately to get back in your life and involving her family as well, hasn't been able to maintain any relationship over one year during the past 12. And while it's normal to still have warm feelings for and possibly love your first love, her level of dedication at this moment is almost alarming. When is the last time you saw or spoke to her? Yet she wants to relocate for you right now? While current relationship seems doomed, I wouldn't end it specifically for the ex, and I also wouldn't rush into anything if you do end it. If she's also 32, both she and family could be panicking that she's aging out of her childbearing years and has no studied long-term prospects. Also, if you knew her family well, wouldn't they all know you've had a girlfriend for 4 years? Seems very suspicious they wouldn't respect that relationship. So, one commentator says go for it, another commentator says he wants an update, and the last commenter really dove into it and I think they make a pretty fair analysis of the whole situation. So now let's move on to OP's edit to see what happened close to the posting date and then we're gonna move on to an update that was just a few days ago. OP's edit 1, 9.58pm Pacific Standard Time, 18th June. Lots of great advice. Tomorrow, Michelle and I are going on a hike, so I'm going to bring up what I want and need out of a relationship to be happy. We'll update tomorrow, all. Edit 2, 1.15pm, 19th of June. I talked to my current girlfriend first. We had a big talk that was the last 6 hours we were hiking, about what we are both wanting in the future. She made it clear that kids and adoption are out of her plan and suggested that we should just be friends if that's what I truly want in the future. 
I told her I would still be friends with her no matter what since all the things we do together and she laughed and said, no kids and I keep my best friend who loves the same things I do? Ka-ching! It's all good, rather we both be happy in the long run. Don't feel too bad or think this was a mistake. We then talked about the letter from my ex and she pretty much said Nicole sounds crazy, but if it's something I want to pursue because of the history we had, then she has no ill feelings of me going that route. Also said, if it doesn't work out, then I can always go back to plan no kids and freedom. Thanked me for bringing it up, then in her typical fashion, joked about me going to be blue balled for a while. Rest of the hike was pretty much us talking like we normally do, then debating lunch. When we got to the trailhead, I asked if she wanted any alone time or not. She said no, and that she eventually thought this would happen as we got older. Asked me if we can still do the friend stuff until something else happens in our life, and I told her yes, of course. She said no harm in that then, and that was that. We're at the mall for her girl's lunch, and I'm sitting at the table like a weirdo, ha. Um, yeah, until I call the ex and see what she is like. That is it for now. So this is the post from mid-June 2019 with all of its edits. And if you want to know how this story continues and what OP did, well then stick with me because the update's coming up now. Good evening, Redditors. A while back, 2019, I posted here in relationship advice about an ex that reached out after a decade. Recently, I was messaged by a few different people asking for an update. Whether you three had been refreshing the page since then, or it's just randomly showed up in your searches, I want to post up the conclusion of what happened, what is still happening, and the journey since the post was made. After Michelle and I ended our relationship, kinda nothing changed aside from living together and sex. Nicole and I started to make plans for when she came out here for her grandma's birthday. Talking on the phone a lot, emails back and forth, we decided on waiting to video chat or send pictures to one another since it wasn't too far off when she would be visiting and we thought it would be a good surprise. The initial hello was awkward as hell. When she got out of the terminal, I recognized her right off the bat and was amazed that she pretty much looked exactly the same as when I last remembered. I had seen pictures at her sisters and parents, but I was floored on how much she hadn't changed in the last 10 years. Getting into the car, we kinda just stared at one another for a minute and she started off with, well, if you don't drive anywhere, people are going to start honking, smart guy. That started our week-long catching up journey. We first went to go get some food and decided on pizza. Oh yeah, and it was pretty easy going from that moment on. We shared stories of what life has been like, showed off scars, looked at each other's trips and vacations, shared each other's hobbies. She asked about our old group of friends and who's still around, etc. That first meeting changed everything in life for us both. I won't go into specifics or minor details on the following dates and days, but to say that week went by in a heartbeat is an understatement. When it was time for grandma's birthday, it was like old times again. The family was easy to be around, we all joked and laughed and didn't have much of any problems throughout the week. Our music taste was the only problem, lots of fighting over that radio dial. <laughs> the goodbye felt painful. Our week of vacation was over and it was time to get back to our lives half a country apart. Flash forward a few weeks and we decided that I go visit her this time around. Phone conversations were going great and airfare was cheap enough. Texted before I got on the plane and told her my arrival time. Landed and felt like I was ghosted. Not there to pick me up. Wasn't answering the phone. Didn't respond to any texts. Facebook said last online four hours ago. I started to feel like maybe this was some joke on my behalf and was worried. About 45 minutes go by and I'm walking towards a hotel when the phone rings and I found out she was so antsy about me coming that she spent the night awake and upon hearing I was on the way, promptly passed out hard. By the time she got to me, I was a sweaty mess but was apologetic all the way to her place and the following two days. We hung out the entire time pretty much doing what we couldn't do where I live. Days at the beach, swimming, me getting in a small amount of rock hounding while she looked for critters and eating all the Cajun food I could ever hope. In a nutshell, it went great and other than the constant ball jokes I had shaved my head, it was all fun. 
meeting her friends, her dog, hanging out and doing things we each love was just tranquil in every way possible. When it came time to say goodbye, she asked if I had any vacation time left and if I did, she could come back up for longer and of course I said yes. Four months go by of back and forth traveling on weekends, always on the phone and by that point, I feel like it's time. I ask her if she wants to move in with me. Immediately said yes and we made our last vacation week into a road trip to bring her up to where I live. Our dogs got along and she was able to transfer to a new department based pretty close to where we lived. It was a dream coming true and it too went by so fast that honestly it feels like it was yesterday. She actually asked me to marry her a few months later and I of course said yes. She had glow in the dark rocks set up to ask me in our yard when we went up to the deck to watch the stars. I feel like I'm going on a rant here. So much for not every detail, right? <laughs> Well, it's been close to a couple of years now since everything started. We have a beautiful daughter together, Ariana. Adopted, we had issues, she wouldn't be able to give birth. Our dogs are jerks and doofuses. Michelle and Nicole have met and we are all friends again. They actually hang out a lot together. She has moved on and we still do a lot of our favorite hobbies together as a group or separately. With COVID and us being at home non-stop together, it's been just fine. Were things perfect? No, but nothing ever is. We had our issues in the beginning and still squabble over stupid things at times. To everyone that was part of the initial journey, I hope you've enjoyed this follow-up. This was the best decision and my only regret is that we didn't reconcile our relationship earlier. This went by in a flash and honestly, I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. Each day is refreshing and a smile rarely leaves my face. I get to spend my life with not only my first love and childhood friend, but also with great friends and family that are always there for us both. What a wholesome story and a refreshing change of pace for the channel I might say. I mean I usually post stories that have a little bit more drama, but this one was just wholesome. Right? I mean what do you guys think? Everybody here acted like an adult. No bitterness or hard feelings or pettiness or weird squabbles or anything of the sort. When OP brought up his concerns about being married and having family, his ex Michelle said, you know what, that's not what I want, but we can still be friends. And OP said, fine, and that's actually what happened. That was awesome. OP and Nicole didn't rush into things right away and they took their time and eventually they got married and now they have a kid and they're living life and everybody's friendly with each other. I think that's fantastic. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a like because it really helps this channel out when you do that. And also, I want to encourage you guys to join the community by clicking that subscribe button. And also, don't forget to go to the video description where you'll find the links to all our social media, particularly our Discord server. That community has been growing so much, it is fantastic. So many cool people have joined us in the past few days. A lot of artists that share their art, a lot of people that engage and like to talk about the videos. It's awesome. So here's a huge shout out to everybody that's joined the community and everybody that's shared what they love. And finally, once again, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video because it really means a lot to me that you guys enjoy this content. So thank you very much. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.